Why would a famous French grandmaster, Alof de Winyako, one of the greatest to reign over the Maltese islands during the stay of the Knights of St. John in Malta, found an institution of resident chaplains of the Order of St. John to promote the Grotto of St. Paul. What is the connection of a 400-year-old institution with one of the most important Grand Masters that reigned over the Order and the Maltese Islands? Why would a small grotto lying beneath the parish of St. Paul in Rabat become one of the most revered shrines in Europe since the early Middle Ages. This is the history of one of the most historical and unique monuments in the Maltese Islands and one of the grandest buildings to grace the village of Rabat. The story of the Winyakor Museum complex drifts back in the mists of time to the creation of a labyrinth of Phoenician, Roman and Christian tombs outside the walls and ditch of the old Roman city of Melite, which in classical times encompassed the city of Medina and the large part of Rabat. Within this complex labyrinth of intersecting corridors lies the Grotto of St. Paul, the cradle of Christianity in Malta. According to tradition, St. Paul the Apostle founded the earliest Christian community in AD 60 during his three-month stay in Malta following his shipwreck while on his way to Rome to stand trial before Caesar. He made use of the grotto which lay just outside the walls of the city as a base for his apostolate. Eventually, the St. Paul's Grotto found itself within a large Pauline complex that included a vast late medieval cemetery with many underground chapels. The complex was revitalized in 1600 by a Spanish hermit Juan Benegas de Cordoba, who acquired the area of this huge complex to welcome pilgrims, both locals and foreigners, who came from various parts of Europe. In 1617, the devout hermit Benegas donated the complex to the Knights of St. John, by then already known as the Knights of Malta. The Grand Master at the time, Alof de Winyako, recognizing the religious and perhaps also the political significance of the shrine, founded and endowed an institution of resident chaplains of the order to look after and promote the grotto. The chaplains resided in an imposing collegio designed by the famous architect Francesco Buonamici. This was probably the earliest baroque building in the Rabat area. This was enlarged further in the 18th century, from where, for two centuries, they exercised their daily services and devotions in the grotto, which was connected to the collegio through an underground passage. As befitted the grandeur of the order and the importance of the St. Paul's Grotto under its custody, the Collegio was endowed with sumptuous halls, private chambers for the chaplains, a kitchen, a refectory and orchards. The upper floor is dominated by an exquisite private chapel, which stands like a watchful sentinel at the far end of the main corridor. The rector's private quarters were annexed to the main building by a separate entrance, which led onto a large garden with various passages leading to the Collegio. The great importance attributed to the Winyakor College complex as an apostolic sanctuary so intimately connected with St. Paul's Day in Malta is borne out by the fact that the Order of St. John spared no efforts in promoting it internationally. In the Christian ethos of the times, and within the culture of the Counter-Reformation, the custody of such an important holy shrine brought the Order greater international status and political power 
that were reinforced by a long stream of European dignitaries that included the papal nuncio Fabio Chigi, the future Pope Alexander VII, that came to worship at the grotto. Other important visitors, such as Lord Horatio Nelson, also visited the grotto while he was in Malta. During the British rule, the Winyacourt College continued to operate through the services of diocesan priests, denominated collegiate canons. These canons not only retained the use of the collegio as premises and offices, but also the use of the liturgical vestments of the original chaplains, namely the mozzetta with the eight-pointed cross of the Order of St. John and the Stolone. During this time, the property was administered by the British government. St. Paul's Grotto, however, has always retained its importance as a Pauline center of devotion and still attracts pilgrims and visitors from all over the world. On the 29th of May 1990, the Grotto was visited by His Holiness Pope John Paul II, who on leaving Malta referred to the moments of silent prayer he had experienced in St. Paul's Grotto. The grandeur of its golden age being long gone, the college, now a shade of its glorious past, served during the Second World War as a place of refuge for many families that had lost their homes during the aerial bombardments of the harbour cities. From this busy and noisy social relief centre, no less than 2,000 loaves per day were baked. Some of the rooms were converted into an infirmary and a public kitchen was also installed. Beneath the palace, an extensive network of war shelters, numbering 50 rooms, were also carved out of the living rock. These were linked by wide corridors, which the visitor can still explore today. Soon after the war, the place was converted into a government school, and after, it became the seat of various religious and civic associations. In the early 1960s, a compromise was reached whereby the government, while retaining all landed property against an annual fee, ceded the Collegio and the Grotto, together with the churches of St. Publius and St. Paul's Bay, to the church. Not without great difficulty, but showing great determination, the church transferred the property to a museum complex on condition that it would retain its identity as a former residence of the chaplains of the Order of St. John and its connections with the cult of St. Paul. The Winyakut Museum Complex is currently undergoing a thorough restoration and reorganization in an effort to return it to its former glory. This Herculean task has been the lifelong passion of Monsignor John Azzopadi, the current curator, whose tireless efforts, encyclopedic knowledge and passionate love for the place, not to mention his unwavering faith in St. Paul, never cease to amaze friends and visitors alike. The museum complex offers the discerning visitor a cornucopia of historical artefacts, ranging from the impressive architecture of the place to paintings, sculptures, church vestments, furniture, musical archives, a precious library and a portable altar that was carried on the war galleys of the Knights of St. John. The intrepid visitor is also welcome to visit the catacombs that lie beneath the Second World War shelters. These include a labyrinth of more than 100 meters of corridors comprising 16 hypogea with Punic, Roman and Christian tombs of various types and at different levels.